شو اسمه ترى كنت تروح يمين انت ما في شعر والله عزيز الغالي والله انا والله بلست بالكيس اعطيك كل شيء يا ابد بس تروح يمين ورق توقع لا لا اهم شيء توقع انا شايف تمام بس بدا يقول لي اشرح على قال انه يبقى ما بشارح على دور لا تشيل انت بليز دونت كاونت ذا ماسلز If you go on counting, this is 16 over here, 11 over here, 8 over here, 14 in the hand. I will never uh, write it down as whatever place you want to write. Okay, so you all have the bones in your hand. Show them. Bones are not there? No, I have only one pair. Okay, what are the features of a long bone? Anybody? What are the features of a long bone to study? Uh, epiphysis, diaphysis. So we call it ends of the bone. Upper end and lower end. Okay. Both are epiphysis. And diaphysis is called it? Clear? So as being a long bone, as being a long, these two long bones, they also have the same feature. Upper end, a lower end and a shaft. But we have to see which part is upper. If you don't study bone, this might be upper, this is lower, okay? <laughs> Till you go through the books or uh, learn this bone, you can have it. The first part in the identification is the identification of the bone. This one is ulna and this one is radius. No. No, because you know some features <laughs> of the bone, okay? Otherwise, if I say, this is clavicle and this is humerus. If uh, any layman is here, he says, okay, might be. Okay, you now you know the names because you have studied. <coughs> the feature of uh, identifying the ulna, because whenever you get ospi, identify the bone. One first question will be identify the bone. The bone. If you know the features, you can identify, oh, ulna is just like tightening the screw or like something, a, okay? Like I don't know what it is called as in Arabic, okay? So having a notch on the upper end. This is identification of ulna. But radius, there is no such notch. Radius have a rounded head. Okay, this rounded part is called as head. So radius is having a head. So can you differentiate now which is ulna? This one is ulna, one mark. Second mark, identify the side of the bone. Either it is of right forearm or left forearm. For that you have to know different parts of the bone. Then you will be able. I do have more bones. So if uh, this Vagadu will come, I'll ask him to take out the other bones. Or we can have it from that. Okay, let me see. No, he's not there. It's better to you people have the bone and see at the same time. Thank <laughs> you. 
A radius bone. It is the most lateral bone of the and shorter as compared to the ulna. Okay? It is short as compared to the ulna. It is bone of the lateral aspect of the forearm. It makes joint with the numerous above to form the elbow and below it makes wrist joint with the carpal bones. It make wrist joint with the carpal root. As you can see over here, this is the only bone which make wrist joint. Alna does not take part in the formation of wrist joint. You can see there are two bones, carpal bone, scaphoid and lunate. The scaphoid and lunate, they are making joint, wrist joint with the lower end of the radius uh, bone. Okay. Radius is having an upper end a lower end and a shaft okay upper end having some features there is a rounded head this is called as head there is a cylindrical area just below narrowing of the head this is called neck of the radius okay just identify the important features this is called as neck of the radius below neck on the medial side of the bone, because this is lateral bone, on the medial side there is a rough elevation that is called radial tuberosity. What it is called? Bicep brachia tendon is going to insert over here. Okay, bicep brachia muscle tendon is going to insert over here. This cap or head is having a depression. Okay, for the capitulum of humerus bone. For the capitulum of humerus. 
this is humerus bone this is capitulum and this is trochlea okay so mm -hmm. this head is going for the capitulum of humerus bone in the formation of elbow joint okay <coughs> so what are the features head neck tuberosity radial tuberosity then we have a shaft shaft is having three borders and three surfaces how many borders three, three borders three. and three surfaces if you just uh, feel on the humerus bone there is a sharp border you can feel a sharp border this sharp border is its medial border is its medial border also called as interosseous border also called as because interosseous membrane attached over here the second part is attached to the ulnar's interosseous border second part of that membrane is attached to the medial bone ulna clear then there is an anterior border if you trace from what is this tuberosity if you trace anteriorly there is an oblique line going down but in the middle this border goes off can you see this anterior tuberosity if you feel anteriorly goes downward there is an oblique line then this border vanished out and on the posterior aspect there is a border going but more marked in the middle more marked in the middle the posterior border okay and going downward more marked in the posterior aspect and going downward so there are three borders medial or let medial or interosseous border a anterior border and a posterior border so there are three borders like this okay there are three borders now surfaces the surface between interosseous border and anterior border is anterior surface is anterior surface the surface between interosseous border and posterior surface is the medial surface and the surface between anterior and posterior lateral is the lateral surface. surface okay one two and three surfaces they give origin to the muscles okay and insertion to the muscles coming down to the lower end lower end anterior aspect is smooth anterior aspect is smooth. and wider as compared to the upper end you can see this is wider as you see from the upper end but on the posterior aspect of the lower end there are rough elevation can you see these are the rough elevation these are called dorsal tubercles what they are called dorsal which muscles are in the posterior aspect extensors muscle the when the extensor muscle are crossing the wrist going towards the dorsum of the hand movement of that muscles create elevations okay so one elevation is prominent in this area which is called dorsal tubercle okay so these are all rough elevation on the posterior aspect or, or on the lower tubercles but one is prominent okay the one is prominent so now you know the parts head neck stylet pro oh, sorry tibial uh, radial tuberosity they all are in in the upper end. radial tuberosity is at the medial side interosseous border which is sharp it is at the medial side and the elevations are at the lower end and posterior so just according to these points put this bone on your forearm whatever bones you have which side of bone do you have left okay now i am putting this bone over here am i right no no why what are the wrong the medial lateral this one this one very good this one is lateral okay i am making it medial now this is anterior surface okay so what the tubercles come anterior the dorsal tubercles come and they are always on the posterior okay they are on the posterior side now dorsal tubercles are posterior side and the medial tuberosity goes to lateral side 
and secondly this is bone of lateral side not medial side okay radius is of the lateral side i am putting it now on the medial side okay here Yes. It is of left forearm. This, yes, this is of the left side because why? The head is on upper end, expanded at lower, medial border is sharp, interosseous border, tuberosity on the medial side, dorsal tubercle on the posterior, dorsal tubercle on posterior, okay? Tuberosity on the lateral uh, medial side, head on the upper end. So this is all the dorsal tubercle. So this is on the lower end. There is another important point. On the medial side of the lower end, there is a groove. There is a notch. On the lower end, medial side of the lower end. Can you see this notch? This notch is for the head of ulna, for the formation of lower radio ulnar joint. Look at this lower end. This is anteriorly smooth. Please, please take lower end in your hand. Anterior, this is smooth. Posterior, this is tubercle. Okay. But on the medial side, you can see there is a notch. And on lateral side, there is pointed elevation downward. This notch is called ulnar notch of radius. What it is called? Ulnar notch of radius. Because the head of the ulna, which is on the lower side, is going to make joint. Inferior radio ulnar joint over here. Inferior radio ulnar joint. And the elevation from the lateral side, this is called a styloid process of radius. What it is called? Styloid process of radius. Clear? And now just revise this. The parts of the bone, side determination. Okay, this is what the main bone is when I identify the side of the Border, head, dorsal tuber. Dorsal tubercle, border, head. Okay? Okay, if head is going downward, not the side. Okay? Head upward, but dorsal tubercle anterior, not the side. Okay, now dorsal tubercle, head is on upper side. Dorsal tubercle on the posterior side, but the sharp border is on the lateral side, not on here. Okay, make it like this. Sharp border is medial, but dorsal tubercle comes anterior. The dorsal is always posterior. posterior. Okay, so this is of the right side. I think side. the tuberosity is the landmark, or the most landmark. Uh, I, I think dorsal tuberosity is the most. Uh, yes, the yes. yeah, border is the main. In my opinion, I think that. If you remember like this, go ahead. Nobody asks you to write the point. Okay, listen. One thing more. In OSPI, if this bone comes and ask you identify the side of the bone, don't write this point. Okay? Just write right or left because you know how to identify. That's why you have identified either it is of right. Or. So no need to write all these points. Just don't waste your time. So just yes, right or left.
This joint is called superior radio ulnar joint. I am talking about radius now. Huh? It is forming a joint which is called superior radio ulnar joint. There is a ligament called as annular ligament which covers this head and attach again to ulna. Coming from this part of the ulna, covering the head and going to attach over. This is called annular ligament which gives a screw like movement for the head. That's why it is called pivot type of joint. Most commonly uh, pulling the arm, especially in young adults or kids, if you just pull the arm forcefully, this head comes out from that annular ligament. Okay, so this displays this displays the head of the humerus from that annular ligament and due to the pull of the muscles the head comes downward and forward okay comes downward and forward but it can easily be handled by an orthopedician you will uh, make it in anesthesia and just pull and again fix it in the socket manually okay. not surgery annular ligament annular ligament which surrounds the head of the humerus or head of the radius with the process of ulna to make superior radio ulna joints. Lower end of the radius is prone to injury. Lower end of the radius is prone to injury and the fracture is called Cooley's fracture. Cooley's fracture. Okay. What happened to whenever you are falling on outstretched head. Okay. A force pulley. This lower end of the radius will detach from here, goes up, uh, outward and upward. Yes. It goes outward and upward. And due to pull of the muscle, this styloid process goes more proximal as a styloid process of the ulna. Okay. And that injury, the hand will come upward. Uh, the forearm uh, radius head will come upward and forward. Mm -hmm. It is just like a dinner fog injury. If you see the uh, fork like this, this is the handle, and these are the parts of the fork. Okay, this is dinner fork. So the hand will appear like this. Lower end of the radius will detach from the radius and come upward. Same but less common is a Smith fracture. What is called? Smith fracture. In this Smith fracture, flexed hand, if you fall on a flexed hand, this part of the bone, radius bone, lower end, will detach and come anterior and superior. Okay? It will come anterior and superior, but it is less common. More common is Cooley's fracture in which lower end of the radius come outward and upward due to the pull of this muscle. So again repetition, head, neck, radial, fibrosity, then this is shaft having prominent introsious border, then at lower end dorsal tubercle on the posterior side, stylite process, ulnar notch, okay and the dorsal tubercle and there is a depression in the lower end for the scaphoid and unit for the formation of wrist joint over here. depression scaphoid depression for scaphoid and lunate bone clear this is all about now this muscle is attached over here is the biceps brachia okay biceps brachia muscle here. This muscle on the lateral side is pronator teres insertion. Blue color is always insertion. Okay. Pronator teres. Pronator teres. Okay. Biceps brachia. This muscle is, uh, no, this muscle is origin of the part coming from uh, the medial side flexor digitorum superficialis. Flexor digitorum super. This is profundus. And this is profundus and this muscle is pronator quadratus. Pronator quadratus at the lower end. It arrives from the ulna, goes to the radius in the lower arm. Quadrangular shape. Can see here. 
This is arising from here, okay, and inserted over here. Arising from here, inserted over here, pronator, quad, rectus muscle. Okay, so the main muscles are there: pronator, quad, rectus, flexor digitorum profundus, superficialis, pronator teres, and the biceps brachial. Posteriorly, these are the two muscles arising here are the abductor pollicis and the extensor pollicis longus and brevis. Okay, so mainly this muscle biceps is important to memorize. Now coming to the ulna. Coming towards the ulna. You all are looking. Some are active and some are because since morning you are in the round of lectures. Okay. Especially you. <laughs> okay. Alna. Its upper end is broader as compared to the radius. Look, radius lower end is broader. And ulna is upper end. And having a cylindrical end at the lower end as compared to the radius. Can you see? This is its lower end. This is its upper end. Clear? Head is on the lower side. But head in ulna radius is on upper side. Head will articulate with the ulnar notch of the radius. Head will articulate with the ulnar notch of the radius. Same head of the radius, head of the radius will form joint with the radial notch of ulna in the upper part, upper lateral aspect. Can you see this? Upper lateral aspect, there is a notch for the radius in ulna to form the superior radio ulnar joint. What it is? Superior radio ulnar joint where there is a movement supination and pro So you can see supination and pronation occurs at this. Okay, of the radius going down here and so supination and pronation is only yes mostly in uh, pronation radius goes on ulna. and when the radius come back it is supination. Clear? Look, this is normal, supine, one, now you are going to prone, prone, radius come over ulna, when supination, radius is going back to its normal position, okay, the supination, this is pronation, this is supination, okay, the upper end having some features, upper end having some features, there is upper prominent area, which forms the prominent of elbow is olecranian process. This is called as olecranian process. If you come anteriorly downward from olecranian process, there is a depression trochlear. notch called as trochlear notch of ulna. Trochlear notch of ulna. Trochlear notch of ulna is, you can see, for the trochlea of the humerus. Can you see? This is trochlea of the humerus and this is capitulum. So trochlear notch just fix in the trochlea of the ulna to uh, of the trochlea of the humerus to form elbow joint. Okay? You can see the olecranian fossa is in full extension will occupy this depression and this depression is called olecranian fossa. Anteriorly if we come anterior to the trochlear notch, there is a projection anteriorly, it is called coronoid process. What it is called? Coronoid process. Coronoid process. In full flexion, this coronoid process will fix in coronoid fossa of the humerus. In the coronoid fossa of the humerus bone. Clear? Just like this. Now, on the lateral side, of this upper expanded end, there is notch for, there is notch for head of the radius. And you, if you trace this downward, you will be having a supinator crest. What it is? It is called supinator crest. And below the notch, there is supinator fossa. And this fossa is for the easy movement of tuberosity of the radius. It gives a space to the tuberosity of the radius to move. Tuberosity of the radius to move in this area. 
So upper end is having how many features? Olecranon process, trochlear notch, coronoid process. So trochlear notch is always on the upper and anterior aspect. Upper and okay. If I put like this, it's a Okay. So it is going to be posterior. Second important thing in this portion to identify the side again the shaft there is a lateral sharp border can you feel this sharp border in the alna lateral sharp border is the interosseous border what it is interosseous border this will attack give attachment to the interosseous membrane and then to the interosseous the membrane is going to attach to the, the interosseous border of the radius okay this sharp border is the lateral border and this lateral border is called interosseous border. Okay, it is called as interosseous border. At the lower end, okay, again not going into borders and surfaces, interosseous border, there is marked, if you trace from olecranon process, there is a line going downward till the stoilet process. If you trace from olecranon process, there is a line going downward along the shaft up to this is the posterior border. This is the posterior border. And one anterior border, if you trace from lateral aspect of the coronoid process, it is the anterior border. This border is anterior. So anterior border lateral border and posterior border so space between these border are the anterior lateral and posterior surfaces lower end is a small no any prominent feature except a small head and a let medially downward stylite process this is medially downward stylite process this is head and this head area is separated from the wrist joint through an articular disc there will be an articular disc cartilage which separated from the formation of ridge joint. So ridge joint is only formed by this and ulna is going to be separated. Ulna is not taking part in the joint. Even through the uh, okay. movement? Uh, yes. No, no. No, no. Ulna is not taking part in any movement of the ridge joint. Okay. So this is how this muscle. Uh, now coming to the muscle attachment, which muscle is this? Uh, Triceps. 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 This is important. Yes. I can ask because it is the only powerful extensor of yes. the forearm. forearm. Very good. Okay. So the forearm muscle which arise from the media lateral side of humerus, they are all the extensor of wrist. Yes. Not <laughs> Okay. Which nerve supply tricep? Very good. Radial is related to which part of the humerus? Three parts. The humerus, two parts. The lateral is above the spinal cord and the radial below the spinal cord. So tricep having how many heads? Three. 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 Infraglinoid. Uh, okay. In a fracture of the humerus, radial nerve is damaged. Yeah, Will you be able to extend the forearm? No. no. Will you able to extend the forearm? No. I say yes. Yes, the uh, uh, triceps. Uh, triceps is supplied by radial. Radial is damaged. Uh, still, there is you can do. There is which nerves? I want to know those muscles. Yeah, there is the. Uh, uh, the backrest. Uh, easy answer. Very easy answer. The radial nerve gives nerve supply to long and medial head of tricep before entering into the groove okay. and fracture is at the groove so nerve is damaged after the groove but supply is before the groove so the triceps two heads can easily extend able to extend otherwise it is a fracture person is definitely unable so finish with the wrist drop wrist drop okay so which nerve is supplying over here Radial. 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 If radial is fractured oh. over here, extension will be able? No. So, person will go into 
the rest. Very good. This is how you will understand. Okay, deltoid, axillary nerve, surgical neck is damaged. No, axillary. No abduction. No. From no. So, this is how. Can you feel the no. cutaneous sensation over here? No. Why? Yes, very good question. Why? Because the axillary nerve, after supplying deltoid teres major, it ends by giving lateral cutaneous branch of arc. Lateral cutaneous branch. If axillary is damaged, you cannot feel the sensation over this area. Intramuscular injection also we avoid to give at this area, upper outer quadrant is best because if you go deep, it will reach the surgical area, you can inject anything and it will compress the axillary nerve. And for uh, weeks, person will be unable to uh, raise up his arm, okay. Second important thing is surgical neck, okay, axillary nerve is going to do. Okay, now person came to you like this, holding up. You don't know either surgery is intact. How can? Uh, it can. Very painful. Just ask, put your finger, ask him, did you feel? Can you feel? He said, yes, I can feel. That means axillary is intact. Okay, these are how the patient can be examined at the emergency department. Okay, so the two joints are formed here. Radial uh, joint, superior, superior. Three actually. Which? Upper elbow. In between these two, three joints. Superior elbow joint, radial nerve, inferior, and a one interosseous joint. Between the two bones by interosseous membrane. So, side determination. Which side is this? Yes. Head is anterior. Yes. Okay. Olecranon notch is anterior. Is toilet process on medial side. Interosseous border. Okay. Okay. Here, the notch goes behind. Okay. And here on the medial side, if notch here, is toilet process go on the lateral side. So this is on of the left side. Okay. It's clear of the left side. Now you can see and and uh, want to go on further details. I will confirm. I will confirm. I will confirm. I will confirm. I will Okay? Yes, finished. The radial nerve is going in this groove. Okay? Radial nerve is running in this groove. If fracture of this radial nerve, which is supplying below this area, all muscle will be damaged. But the muscle tricep is also supplied by radial nerve. Okay, and it is the powerful extensor of the elbow. My question was, if the fracture of the shaft occurs and radial nerve damage, then still this person can be able to extend the forearm? Yes, because the uh, triceps is having three heads, long head, medial head and lateral. So first two heads are supplied by radial branches given before entry to the groove. It gives branches over here. And the damage is after the groove, but the nerve muscle is intact because it takes nerve supply before the entry of the radial nerve into the nerve. That's why the person can be able to extend. Uh, yeah, the other point about the uh, Another point? Yes, please, Victor. Uh -huh. Are you yes, sorry completed? about, uh, about uh, uh, the toy? If there is yes. an injury, the injury in the surgical neck? 
because the axillary nerve is related to this part. Axillary nerve is related to the surgical neck. If fracture of this part occurs, the axillary nerve is going to damage. Okay? And this axillary nerve is supplying the hyoid, teres minor, and ends into the cutaneous supply. Axillary nerve supply deltoid muscle and teres minor. Teres minor is damaged, deltoid muscle is going to be The person will be unable to abduct the 90 degrees. Clear? So, if a person comes to you with a fracture of the surgical nerve and he is holding, how will you confirm either axillary nerve is damaged or not? You just uh, pinch this area of the skin and ask him, can you feel it? He says, yes, I can feel that means your nerve is intact. If the nerve is damaged, you cannot feel it because axillary nerve ends it by supplying this area of the skin. This one is the left side. Okay. So, uh, it comes over here, it goes into the roof, then come to lie in the muscle regularly. So, so rising from the lateral side. To the lateral When it goes underneath the and then turn behind by giving a long branch. Then in the lower end, it becomes cutaneous, it becomes a dorsal cutaneous branch to supply three and a half of the skin of the dorsal On the medial side, three and a half by a cutaneous branch of medial nerve. And on both dorsal and medial ulnar nerve, supply one and a half. I usually, uh, do you have pen? Oh yeah, I'm going to go to the